Hey World Changers, I'm Donald. I'm Niza. And, and this, this is HYD. HYD. And here at HYD, we hope to encourage, mm. empower, mm. and engage with you mm. to be world changers for Christ in our community. That's right. And if you're joining us for the very first time, you are so, so welcome. welcome. Let us know in the chat section where you're watching Shit. from. Who you're with. In fact, let's take a moment right now. Share the link. Let's, let's wait for you. Let's wait for you. Mm -hmm. Copy, paste, share. You sent it? You done? Good. Great. If you missed last week's episode, we started a new sermon series called Transformed. Mm. Speaking of Transformed, who's your favorite Transformer? Oh man, that's Optimus Prime. Easy money, bro. The standard? That's right. <laughs> Let us know in the chat section, chat section who your favorite Transformer is. And if you missed last week's episode, please head over, over to our YouTube channel at Watoto Church and please be empowered. Powered. That's right. This week is a different conversation. We're talking about divine design. Uh -huh. Are they ready for it? I think they're ready. They yeah, pull out your pen, okay. your Bible, uh -huh. your notebook. Uh -huh. But before that, we actually have your two cents. Uh -huh. And today's question is, why are art pieces so expensive? But why are they though? You know? Let's find out. I believe art pieces are so expensive because they are just so exquisite, so relevant. There are, There is so much to it that is far beyond just what we see, just beyond the colors, the contours, and everything that includes and involves art. Art pieces are literally, quite literally, emotion. They are a piece of a person in that their love, their passion, their emotion, it's a piece they are all putting into their work and their art so that they get something that's really, really amazing and great and something they're never going to get back. Of course, there's also the factor of time and effort, which is very, very notable. Anyone who's done art would know exactly how much time it takes to get at least a decent piece. So imagine how much more time we get to even get an incredible, great piece, which is obviously a lot of time and a lot of effort and there's learning and then there's dextrosity and all these kind of things to it. But the emotion is one thing that's just on like a complete other level. It's so much passion, so much love, so much emotion. It's a literal piece of a person that's going onto paper to make something that's going to be incredible and never before seen. So that's why I think art pieces are really, really expensive. Well, um, as an artist myself, I understand why people tend to overprice their, their pieces. And uh, I wouldn't call it overpricing, consider the factors that they put in. Well, the first one is time. An artist takes time to create his work because we all know that when you rush something, it, isn't, it doesn't come out the way you would have wanted because you, you get to see people say that uh, if, if maybe I started earlier, it would have looked much better so obviously there's time factored into it and then the next one is the effort the effort um, the effort put in some of these pieces especially things that are done through sculpture um, welding all that piece of that's all that's all, all those are works of art so um, we get to see that these things cost a lot of energy to be put in so they can't really undervalue the work that they have put in. The next thing is prices of the, of, the, of the raw materials that they factor into the art piece. I mean, we can see that through water, water paint is much cheaper than oil paint, than acrylic paint. All those things are pricey there. They have hefty prices on them. So obviously they have to put it into the pricing of the final art piece and also factor in the profit that they need to get. And lastly is Art is more of an expression of one's feelings. It's, it's, it's a message. And if one, if one values his, his artwork in a way that uh, he, he, he sees it as something beautiful, 
not just with sight, but like the meaning behind it. Okay, art's not just on the surface, it's something, there's always a message behind it. And that's why I personally think that, um, I believe why art pieces can seem more expensive than other commodities, like like food and all that. So, yeah, that's, that, that's, that's my piece of thinking. World Rangers, welcome, welcome, welcome to the segment of our teen service here that we call HYD, which is really a place where we get to engage with you, encourage you, and empower you through the word of God to become a world changer in your community for King Jesus Christ. Welcome, welcome, so good to have you here. It's not too late to invite somebody. Share this link if you're joining us online. Let everybody know that HYD is happening. I'm not alone on this stage. Pastor Zen is back again. Yep. <laughs> Good to My have name you. is Zen. <laughs> right, and? My name is Rains. Rains Nicole. <laughs> Rain is Nicole. <laughs> Good to have you guys here on set. I mean, last week we had such a great conversation. I was with Pastor Zen and Favor. We really started a beautiful sermon series that we've named Transformed. And we were establishing the fact that, man, it's important to walk with Jesus when it comes to understanding our gender identity and our sexuality. That Jesus is the only one who can de truly define it. And we need to be students of Jesus, stay with him even when it's hard, and run back to him. And that is how we get to find out that precious treasure which is our identity in him the bible tells us this in the book of second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 that all scripture is god breathed and it's useful for teaching for rebuking for correcting so that you and i my friends so that the saints are equipped for service and 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 it's teaching us in righteousness that's why friends this moment is very very important when we get to open the word of god and get to learn from it. And today, we're carrying on with our series, Transformed. So, Pastor Zen, what's on the table today? Come on, let's pray together wherever you are. Father, we want to say thank you so much for this time. Your word is powerful. It gives us hope. It encourages us. And I pray that your word will do exactly that as we talk and as we, you know, enjoy your presence here today. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. 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 I hope that you have your Bible, your pencil, your iPad. <laughs> These days, guys have iPads and iPhones. Well, today we continue with our Salmon series, Transformed. And like Pascal said last time, we we're talking about what does it mean to follow Jesus? Today, we're diving even deeper. We're going to be talking about divine design when you hear divine design what comes to mind um a design that is divine. <laughs> the, the design that is divine you <laughs> home in the comment God. section please tell us what what do you understand by divine design yeah. well honestly um when you think about karaoke have you guys done karaoke before yeah, yeah. mimed a song that was not yours yeah there so is well. this particular song that I love. And so we're going to play a song and I want you at home to tell me what stands out for you in this song. But also you guys, you need to tell me, do you know this song? Does that song communicate something to you? So just listen to this song. amazing song by the way that is one of my favorite songs on the watoto children's choir so yeah, 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 yeah. guys tell me what stands out for you in that song anything you hear that kind of catches you um, stays with you <laughs> god is a god of signs and wonders but he's a miracle working god yes yeah. uh-huh pascal i love the chorus you make all things new you make all things new, which is very true that's amazing you see honestly this is almost like God. I mean, yeah. God created us. And uh, we were not there when he was creating us. All I know that when God created us, he loved us so much. And so the Bible actually says that we are beautifully and wonderfully made, you know, in the image of God. And Pascal, if you get this song one day and they tell you you're going to do a karaoke, and you know this song has a bit of rapping. It does, it does. Yeah, and yeah. imagine the screen goes blank. And you start creating your own words, yeah, yeah. but still following the same beat. 
would it still be Signs and Wonders or would it be Pascal and Wonders? I would be so mad at me. If you watch the video, <laughs> All into it is rapping. I think I'm not sure I'll get the words right. Yeah, and it's true. Somebody would actually go like, "No, I'm gonna go for it until the song ends." But what that means is you have actually recreated something. And so, what happens with us is, um, in this day and age, there are many people that are recreating. God's design, God's artwork. You know when God created the sky, when he created the waters, when he created the plants, and then after that he created you and me. He said it was good. We were masterpieces. I was thinking about this. I mean if God as an artist had an exhibition and he was putting plants there, oceans there, and a human being there, I think we would be the masterpiece. Yeah. We were one of his favorites. We are true. his favorites. It's true. That's what the Bible says. If yeah. chapter 2, verse 10. Are yeah. God's handiwork. God's yes. masterpiece. Made masterpiece. Yeah. And, and yet, yeah. sadly, yeah. when you read on social media, mm. when, when you interact with young people, they always ask this question. Why is it that we know that God created us, but yet struggle with our identity? That's a deep question. As we continue with this sermon series, I pray that you will understand that God has created you for a glorious identity and purpose. The idea that God has a glorious identity and purpose that he wants to unveil. Yeah, yeah. Another thing that we're going to understand today, really, as we talk about gender and identity and our sexual identity, is that gender is very key to how you and how humanity fulfills the purpose that God has given Amen. us. There's yeah. a reason why he made us how we are. Yeah. Because he has a plan for us. Yeah. And when he makes everything, he grants it a purpose. So we can't tamper with it. Right. And then we're also going to understand that by rejecting God's design, the way God intended for us to live, yeah. we reject his fluidity and the yes. harmony in which he intended us to live. And yeah. He is designed to manifest. That's true. If we want to find the mind behind a song, yeah. a painting, mm -hmm. a piece of art, mm -hmm. we go to the designer. Yes. And at this point, welcome mm -hmm. to the Bible because that's what actually yeah. tells us about who we are. Mm -hmm. In Psalms 139, God tells us that he knit you together in your mother's womb. He made you wonderfully complex. Yeah. <laughs> I love that complex. You know, it means that nobody can tamper with you. You're complex. You are a masterpiece. I mean, um, sadly, we have seen that uh, very many young people sometimes wake up and they say, you know, um, I want to change my sexuality, yeah. sadly. And uh, they choose and say, you know what, today I'm a boy. And the next day they say, I'm going to be a girl. It's very sad. If that's you and you're watching, you're welcome. This is the right place to be. Or if you have a friend or a relative that, you know, identifies as LGBTQ+, you are welcome because this Salmon Series Transformed is for you. I want to say God still loves and cares about his creation, which is you. It's true. Sin came into the world. The devil has brought lots of confusion, but God still sticks to what he did originally. He created you beautifully and wonderfully. And the first point, you know, when we talk about the glorious identity, we're talking about God's image. And so number one is man. God actually is very proud to say that I created you in my image. That means that everywhere we go, we are representatives of him. Yeah. Here on earth, whatever we do, we are his representatives. But also, it means that he has given us purpose. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Yes. As then I have a purpose. As then who is a male, I have a purpose. Yeah. You know, yeah. as rain, who is a female. Rain <laughs> reigns who is a female you have a purpose okay and so that is very important for us to understand that god has actually created us yeah. 
in his image. And that is very important. That's true. You know, earlier on when you were taking verses, I'm just thinking about uh, how a creation, yeah. you know, gets to a place, and that's where we are at, sadly, yeah. That, yeah. that it's now choosing what it wants to become. Mm -hmm. And like yeah. you rightly said, yeah. the only way to get to know truly how a creation can actually find out who they truly are is yeah. to go back to the creator who yeah. defines who we are. Right. So being made in the image of God is such a priceless yeah. thing. Mm. I mean, when you think about it, every art piece, every painting has a signature of the artist. <laughs> I mean, what is, what, what is, what is on us? What, what, what's that? What's a signature on us? It basically says God, yeah. the almighty yeah. God, the king of kings and the Lord of lords yeah. created you. And so, I mean, we, we have to be proud of that. Yeah. We have to be proud of that. Pascal, what's the other thing that... Uh, you know, we can expect or what we can take note of as far as understanding divine design. Yeah. Um, another thing is this, and, and, and I like where we are heading because th like the creation, now we turn back to what the one who made us actually says. Yeah. That's how we get to find out. Yeah. Another thing is His like, intent. Like you said at the top, mm. uh, uh, really understanding that there's a reason behind why God made us the way we are. Yeah. It's like if, if you are to set off on a journey, you pack maybe shoes for hiking and you pack yeah. uh, maybe a torch because you know it's going to be dark. There's a reason why you're prepping it right. that way. Yeah. When we read scriptures in Genesis, mm -hmm. the Bible says that God created them male and, and female. female. He created them. There was a reason. When God made uh, a creation, everything up to day seven, he rested. He said it is good. good. Then he made man. Yeah. And for the first time in scripture, yeah. he actually says it it's not is good. not good. Good yeah, for man to be alone, and we know yeah. that what follows is that Eve comes mm -hmm. on board, and, yeah. and what God was doing is completing creation, completing that circle. Mm -hmm. But it's because He had something in mind, mm -hmm. which is why what we're talking about now is that really gender is key yeah. to us fulfilling the plan of God for us here on earth. Yeah. So if we change that, yeah. then we are affecting what God actually wants to do through yeah. us. If we change who God yeah. wanted us to be, yeah. And so when He made man made woman, he had a plan, he had an end in mind. One of them is this, procreation. Yeah. If he made man and woman, male and female, and he gives them a purpose, he says, multiply, fill yeah. the earth, subdue yeah. it. Yeah. And we start to tamper with that, yeah. affecting what God actually Definitely. intended. Yeah. So male and a female yeah. is a design mm. that God owns. Yeah. And when we tamper with that, there is confusion. There is. There Total is. confusion. You know, another thing that has crossed my mind is when yeah. we edit that, yeah. we, are, we, we affect the, the, way order, the order of things the yes. way God wants them to be. Yeah, yeah. For example, we are meant to be complimentary. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, you do, it's, it, there's no hierarchy in this. Yeah, yeah. how God intended it. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, it, what, where, what you do, uh, uh, the, the, another person comes and adds yeah. and becomes perfect. I guess what yeah. I'm really trying to say yeah. here is that God has a plan. He had a plan. Yeah. And we cannot afford to tamper yeah. with the plan yeah. that God had established. But then mankind already tampered with that plan yeah, yeah. when they ate the fruit and all these things. Yes. Mankind tampered with that and it destroyed how God intended That's for right. man to live. Yes. We see that before man ate the fruit, they were living, they were living harmoniously. harmoniously. Yeah. Yeah. Life was good. Yeah. He, God thought it was good, right? Mm -hmm. But then they were deceived into thinking that they could become... I'm going to take us back to us being the image of God. Yes. Yeah. Being the image of God doesn't mean we are God, right? Mm. But then they were deceived with like the entire notion of like they could they could become like God. They could God, become like God, which yeah. Which caused the entire downfall. We know the story, yes. right? Oh. And then, like you said, it causes all this chaos and things. Mm -hmm. um, in Genesis 3... Adam is told that one of the curses that God gives Adam is that he's going to toil to, uh, to get food and yes. all these things. That's not how God intended yes. life to yeah. be, right? And then because of that, there's all this confusion with the LGBTQ plus thing. Yes. Like we're not sure of our, our gender and yeah. our identity in Christ mm -hmm. and all these things. Yeah. And that like, rejecting what God originally had for us mm -hmm. causes all this confusion, causes us to have chaos in life, to toil, to get food and all this gender chaos around us. Yeah. It's true. I mean, God created male and female to be complementary counterparts. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important. That's his agenda. You know, I, I want to read for us something that is very beautiful by um, a preacher 
uh, called Bill Johnson, and this is what it says. When you get rid of the creator, you get rid of design. When you get rid of design, you get rid of purpose. When you get rid of purpose, you get rid of accountability. When you get rid of accountability, you get rid of the need to answer for your choices. When you get rid of the need of people giving an account of their life, you get rid of the fear of God. And it's the fear of God that is the beginning of wisdom. And when you have no fear of God and no wisdom, all you're left with is total confusion. You see, Adam and Eve did not just eat the fruit. They disobeyed God. That means everything about them changed. There was confusion with how they looked. There was confusion with how they thought. There was total confusion. And I guess what the preacher here is trying to say is when we separate ourselves from the divine design, there's going to be confusion. But I'm very glad that we serve a God of second chances. He's merciful. He honestly can get us from where we are and he can make us something beautiful because he's the one that made us. Yes, yeah. he can. Yes, he can. And, and I think... That's the beauty about our father. Yeah. That he's not a creator who rejects his creation. Yeah. yeah. When if we pause for a moment and acknowledge that we've gone wrong, yep. that we've tampered with the way things ought to be. And, I, and that's why we're having these conversations. Mm. For us to come back to a place of acknowledging that God made me and so he defines who I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That if I run back to him, he can receive me in his arms right. and redefine and give me that true sense of identity. And nothing else has to define who I am except yeah. my God. And so that's very encouraging. Another thing right. that's very great about God yeah. is that he's not confused about who he thinks you are. Right now, the world is so confused. There's all these things that you can be and you can't be. Yeah. God isn't confused about who you he are. He will not. And when he we can't. follow him and do what he wants us to do, live yeah. the way he intended for us to live, yeah. we will be sure about who we are in him, like who he wanted us to be, yeah. who he wants us, how he wants us to live. Mm. Yeah. Great. And back to the question, why do we struggle with our identity and yet we know who made us? Sin. Yes. That's sin. Why we struggle is because of sin. And, uh, you know, you talked about it in the fall. That story is very important. And it still applies to us today. You know, we are not perfect. I believe that we've all gone through cycles of questioning whether what God made us to be is actually what we're supposed to be. And it's true. When you look at social media, when you interact with your friends, they're saying, man, I think this is cool. You can do it, man. You're missing out. Just try it out. No, no, no. I think, not even think. This is what I know. What I know is we get our answers from the Bible and from the word of God. He is the creator. He is the artist. The scenario, you know, we started with about a song, an artist. I believe, you know, this song, Signs and Wonders, was created by a worship, uh, a total worship. And man, I believe when they sat, they grabbed one of the kids and one of the kids shared their story. I actually, I'm very glad I was part of that season. And when we heard the stories of the kids, man, it was short of a miracle. It's a miracle and so we serve a God of signs and wonders. When you hear the stories of the kids and see where they are now to where they were, I mean, he's a God of signs and wonders. Now, when I play around with that song, it may not affect me, but when that child hears that song, yeah. it sits different. Yeah. When we tamper with God's design, mm. it affects God, who is the designer. Yes, it it does. does. And so, we want to leave with you this. God made you, and he understands everything that is going on with your life. He is the only one that can put you back together. I want to share a story, a very short story. One day, a guy was going for a trip. 
And so his car broke down. And one of the guys passes him and tells him, hey, can I help you with your car? I realize you're struggling. The guy says, no, I don't need your help. And this is what happened. Another guy passes and says, hey, I see that you're struggling. Can I help you with your car? And the guy is like, no, I got this. I've been here for hours. I think I'm almost there. This guy comes back, finds the guy still there and says, man, honestly, I feel bad that I'm going to pass you again. Can I help you? And the guy says, okay, it's okay. You can help me. Well, to cut the long story short, his car was a Ford, and this was Mr. Ford that he was meeting. The actual designer of the Ford. And he just touched a couple of things here and there, and he was good to go. God is calling you every single time. He's saying, man, I can help you. I can help you. I can help you. I can remind you. I can fix you. But you know, sometimes we are big-headed and we don't want any help. We want to pray with you as we conclude. You're there and, man, it's tough. You have run away from the original design. We want to pray with you. But also if you're there and you want to accept this Jesus who can fix you, when we fall, he's merciful enough to pick us up. He is a friend of sinners. He loves us. He cares about us. Actually, the Bible says in John 3.16, God, the Father, gave His Son to die for your sins. That's how precious you are. Masterpieces, paintings, songs have names written on those CDs. But man, you have the blood of Jesus all over you. And that is love. I want to pray with you. Father, thank you so much for every person that is watching. Lord, if there is anybody who is struggling with their identity and they're asking the question, who am I? I pray, oh God, that you will reveal yourself to them. I pray for that young person or anybody that is watching and they want to accept you as their Lord and Savior. My Lord, I pray that you will get into their hearts and you will change them and you make them new. I thank you so much for that decision that they are making today because they are now children of God. We thank you and we pray all this in trusting in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, if you say that prayer, welcome to the family of Jesus. Call the number below or email morph.connect at watertochurch.com. Amen. Amen. What a great conversation we've had here. My friend, if what we've talked about has brought some questions in your mind, we want to be able to come by you. So will you get in touch with us? Send us a DM on our Instagram at watertomov or like Pastor Zen said get in touch with us. Please do so. We want to come alongside you on this journey that you have started. Now you know that HYD doesn't quite wrap up this way. It's now time for CIA. CIA. Let's go. Pastor Zen is up. Hello everyone. My name is Daniel and I'm soon joining campus. My CIA question is can anyone be a Christian and still not go to church? Thank you, Daniel, for that question. Well, can you still be a Christian and not go to church? Well, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 10.25, do not give up the spirit of meeting together. Being a Christian really means being Christ-like. Therefore, we do exactly what Christ tells us to do. When we meet together, when we worship Jesus together, something happens. We grow, but we also care for one another. So, 